Thank you for joining us on your Saturday evening. I'm Sarah Horbakowitz and I'm here in Razorback Red because there's a Razorback game tonight. The March Madness continues. Our Tyler Cass is live outside the stadium in San Francisco. Tyler, it's already buzzing behind you. Oh yeah, Sarah. I mean, it's been it's been buzzing for the last hour or so. Lots of Duke blue and of course, even a good amount of Razorback red. I've seen a couple of guys in hog hats walk by. There's a woman in silts. She's wearing red, so I'm assuming she's a Razorback fan. A lot of hog calls coming your way as Arkansas and Duke battle for a spot in the final four. Lead eight action coming your way from San Francisco in just a little bit. But look, everyone else is talking final four or go home. The hogs, they're focused on tonight and tonight only. You know, I don't think you can look beyond, you know, what if. I mean, what if you could look the other? What if we lose, and then we're done for the year? I don't think you can. I think you just gotta focus on the team you're playing, strengths, weaknesses. That's all. You know, that's all we really needed to, you know, think about right now. Now, of course, like most games, the Gonzaga game, the Auburn game, every game, the experts seem to be picking against Arkansas. The Razorbacks don't care. That's what they're used to working with. Now, you know who picks Arkansas? The Hog fans. You might remember Cole Phillips. We told you his story a couple days ago. The blind Razorback fan. Every game he's attended, Arkansas has won. He was at the Sweet 16 matchup. You can see him celebrating there, and he's got high hopes for what's ahead for the Razorbacks. feel good. I feel good. I feel good. Do, I knew Cole, that I would do, do you see that? What? Over there. Oh, oh I see. Yeah, I see, see a ticket to the final four on the horizon. Yes. <laughs> So there you have it. That's what's on the line tonight. A ticket to the Final Four. Arkansas, Duke, it all comes down to this. Elite Eight coming your way at 749 on TBS. We'll have a lot more from San Francisco breaking down this matchup in just a few minutes in sports. I'll see you then. For now, though, live from outside the Chase Center, Tyler Cass, THV 11 Sports. Corrales has a first look at your weather. Yeah, thanks, Tyler. He looks like he's having the time of his life over there. We've had some uh, great things to be looking forward to today. Of course, the game later on this evening, but also some amazing weather that we've been starting off this weekend. Matter of fact, we saw highs at around 70 degrees here in central portions of the state. Tad cooler to our north, but look at that. To our south, they saw highs approaching the upper 70s there in Texarkana. Now, right now, we're still sitting in the near the 70s this evening with a few cooler pockets to our north and still pretty mild to our south. Temperatures will be cool down pretty significantly though, especially to our north and east. Matter of fact, they'll be in the low to mid 30s. There we will be around the low to mid 40s here in central portions. It'll be cold enough to our north and east where they actually be under a frost advisory as those temperatures drop to near freezing by tomorrow morning. This is why we always tell you this time of year we want you to wait until mid April before you kind of put your plants out there. So if you're in the areas in blue, make sure to bring in or cover any of those sensitive plants. So so we will be seeing a warm up in our near future, along with the shower and storm potentials going into next week. I'll talk about that with another look at your forecast coming up in minutes. And we're following developing news tonight out of Little Rock, where police are investigating an overnight homicide at the eatery Pizza D Action. Police have not yet released the name of the victim, but in a statement posted to the restaurant's Facebook page, they say, quote, we struggled with what the right thing to do today would be. We decided that we would rather be open as a gathering place for friends and family. The restaurant also said, quote, our employees and customers have experienced a traumatic event with someone we all deeply cared about. And this morning, journalist and Arkansan Brent Renault was laid to rest. Renault was shot and killed during a Russian attack in Ukraine earlier this month. He was filming refugees fleeing the country for a documentary when he died. And today, dozens gathered at the Pulaski Heights United Methodist Church to pay their respects. Renault's family and friends spoke in honor of his life. You were so good to us, and we hope you know how much we love you. Brent, you were the role model we wanted and needed. Renault's brother also shared that the U.S. journalist that was injured in the same attack as Renault is expected to make a full recovery.
And President Biden wrapped up his historic visit to NATO member Poland with some powerful and unexpected words about Russian President Vladimir Putin. That as he wages a devastating war on Ukraine. Wendy Gillette reports. Addressing a large crowd in Warsaw, Poland, President Biden spoke some of his strongest words yet against Russian President Vladimir Putin. For God's sake, this man cannot remain power. Shortly after the president ended his address, a White House official released this statement, clarifying the president's words. The president's point was that Putin cannot be allowed to exercise power over his neighbors or the region. He was not discussing Putin's power in Russia or regime change. Since the war on Ukraine began over a month ago, Mr. Biden has called Putin a war criminal as his forces bombard countless civilian sites. A dictator bent on rebuilding an empire will never erase a people's love for liberty. Meeting with Ukrainian refugees in Warsaw earlier in the day, President Biden was asked what their plight makes him think of Putin. He's a butcher. The U.N. Refugee Agency says more than two million Ukrainian refugees have crossed into Poland. But helping these refugees is not something Poland or any other nation should carry alone. All the world democracies have a responsibility to help. President Biden said the war has already been a strategic failure for Russia, which has not gained control of any major city. And he issued this warning. Don't even think about moving on one single inch of NATO territory. Air raid sirens sounded Saturday in western Ukraine's largest city, Lviv. Explosions rang out and plumes of smoke rose above the city, which is just about 40 miles from the Polish border. Wendy Gillette, CBS News, Zeshuv, Poland. And in that address, President Biden also sent a message to the Russian people, saying they're, quote, not our enemy. The president said Vladimir Putin's aggression has cut them off from the rest of the world. Now still coming up, we'll talk about how a Lono County staple is being supported by its community after a fire. Well, we've had a nice stretch of weather and the quiet weather will persist through the weekend, but we do have some changes coming our way as we near the end of March. I'll let you know what we can expect with the look at your forecast just ahead. 